Thank you very much. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this very nice event. So my name is Dionysi Stefanatos. I'm in, with the Department of Material Science, University of Patras, and this is joint work with Vasilios Vagelakos and Emmanuel Paspalakis. I will speak about how to use optimal control for the fast charging of an Eisen spin pair one batteries. So before that, uh, this is a map of Greece. This is the city of Patras, and the Cure landmark is a bridge connecting the city to mainland Greece. So the outline of the talk is the following. I will first describe the Eisen spin pair quantum battery, then show how the dynamics of this system can be mapped to the dynamics of a single spin. Then I will define the optimal control problem and solution, put emphasis on the bank singular bank charging protocol, give some examples, and finally conclusions and outcomes. So the quantum battery that we consider is an Eisen spin one half pair in the standard NMR framework. This means constant longitudinal, longitudinal field and time dependent transverse fields. So we have the total Hamiltonian, the drift Hamiltonian, the time-dependent control Hamiltonian. The drift Hamiltonian contains the ice interaction quantified by this J, and also the constant longitudinal field expressed by this omega Z. The control Hamiltonian contains the time-dependent transverse control fields applied to both spins omega X of T, omega Y of T. So this Hamiltonian turns out to couple the triplet state while the singlet one is uncoupled. Uh, for the problem of interest, the system state is restricted on the triplet manifold, so it can be expressed this way. And if we use a Schrodinger equation, we find the following equation for the probability <coughs> amplitudes of these states here. So, charging this quantum battery corresponds to transferring population from the initial spin down state C0 to the excited state, so at the final time capital T, the stored energy is maximized. Stored energy is defined as the difference between the average energy at the final time, capital T, minus the average energy at the beginning. We can express this normalized stored energy as a function of the final population of the uh, spin down state and the spin up state, where the ratio T is the ratio of the I's in capital J to the longitudinal field of omega Z, it should be less than one half, so uh, C0 is the ground state of the system. Next. We saw how we can map the dynamics of this system to that of a single spin. Uh, we use transverse control field with amplitude capital omega of T and a central frequency omega C. So the components of the field are omega X and omega Y are given this way. Then we make a transformation from probability amplitude A to probability amplitude C and note that this transformation preserves the populations. So the equation for probability amplitude C is this one. And here we choose the central frequency to equal this omega z over two, so that we cancel, we make zero this one and this one. And the reason is that we, for the charging process, we want this level and this level to talk directly, while the other level has a j the tuning. Now, in order to map these dynamics to that of a spin one half system, we make the following transformation. And we notice that this quantity capital C here is constant. And when the battery starts from the spin down state C0, this constant equals minus one over square root of two. The other two uh, <laughs> variables, they obey the two level system equation given here or in compact notation with state C given by A and B and Hamiltonian H prime given by this one. The initial conditions for A and B when the battery starts from the spin down state C0 is that A of zero equals one over square root of two B of zero equals zero. And note that the normalization for this state here is one over square root of two. This does not make any problem. Next, the goal of a charging protocol, omega of T, which is applied for an interval between zero and capital T, is to maximize the stored energy at the final time. We can express the stored energy as a function of this final value of A of T. Depends on the amplitude of A, but also on the real part of A. And full charging is achieved when the final value of A becomes minus one over square root of two. And since the starting value for A of T was plus one over square root of two, we see that full charging corresponds to the block vector returning back to the North Pole, having not to add a global phase pi. So in order to get an understanding of the charging process, we initially consider a constant control protocol where we apply a constant pulse omega of t equals omega zero for the whole interval. Then it is easy to find the final state, which is expressed 
in this way, where this small omega is given by this relation and the components Nx and Nz by this relation also. If we actually apply a delta pulse with strength cap omega zero, capital T equals two pi, then we actually can generate instantaneously the desired pi phase because this becomes cosine pi equals minus one, this is zero, this is zero. And because we have a delta pulse, this is zero also. So we have uh, achieved the full charging state. But for finite omega zero, no matter how large, there is uh, the following problem that we may have this minus one, but then this is finite, so it destroys the pi phase. So for finite omega zero, we actually need a minimum duration to achieve full charging, which is given by this relation, equals two pi over j. And the minimum constant amplitude, which can achieve full charging in this time, is equal to square root of three times j. Next, we move and seek out protocols which for infinite omega zero can break the previous limit of two pi over j for constant charge for you when using a constant pulse. And we hope that the protocols that we find, the modified versions of them when we go to smaller omega zero can also break this limit. So we consider the following pulse sequence where we have we, we allow instantaneous hard pulse. So we initially have a hard pi pulse around X, and then an evolution with zero control for a duration pi over J, and then a final pi pulse around minus X. The total propagator corresponding to this pulse sequence is this one. It is equal to minus sigma Z, which achieves the desired pi phase. Note that the duration of the protocol, which is pi over J, is the time needed distinguished two levels separated by frequency J. Now, if the control is restricted to be positive, so we cannot have this kind of pulse, then we can use, instead of this pulse, we can use this 3 pi uh, delta hard pulse with the same duration, achieving the same result. Now, we are in a position to define the optimal control problem. So we are interested in the fast charging of the fan battery. So we consider maximum control amplitude omega zero greater than the value that we said before that it is necessary by a constant pulse to achieve charging in two pi over j units of time. So the problem is the following. Uh, if we use this uh, maximum control amplitude, then we will get a minimum time smaller than this one. So the problem is defined as follows. The goal is to maximize the stored energy at the final time for fixed duration capital P smaller than what we can get with a constant pulse. Now, we solve this problem for both cases where omega of t can be positive or it can also take negative values in this symmetric domain. Now, uh, for the optimal solution, we formulate the control Hamiltonian in the usual way for the quantum systems. We have these functions phi x, phi y, phi z. This is, it turns out to be a constant. Now, note that the adjoint jet lambda satisfies the same equation as the state C which is this one, and this is the equation for the adjoint bra. And the terminal condition at the final time for the adjoint jet is obtained from the goal that we want to maximize the stored energy at the final time. is connected to the final value of A of T. Next, uh, for the optimal solution, we use the maximum principle, which says that optimal control should be selected in order to maximize the control Hamiltonian for almost all times. Now, in the control Hamiltonian, our control variable omega appears to be linear, so the optimal pulse sequence is actually determined by the switching function, which phi x, which multiplies the control. So if phi x is positive, then the control takes its maximum possible value. If phi x is negative, then it takes the minimum possible value. But if phi x is zero for a finite time interval, then the maximum principle provides no information about the optimal control. In this case, the control is called singular, and it's determined from the requirement that the switching function and its derivatives should be zero. Now, it is clear that in order to find the optimal control, it is necessary to track the time evolution of the switching function phi x. It turns out that the vector composed by phi x, phi y, phi z satisfies this rotation equation, where this beta, beta is actually the total field for the effective two-level system. It turns out that the singular control for the problem is zero, so singular arcs correspond to rotations around z axis. And on the singular arc, we have also the following conditions that phi x and phi y should be zero. Now, we can describe the optimal solution. So for short available times, for short durations, we find that a single constant pulse is optimal. But as long as the available duration is longer than this limit pi over j, then coming to play 
the bank, singular bank sequences, which are actually modified versions for finite omega zero of the protocols with the hard pulses that are described at the beginning. So the bank, singular bank sequence for the case where the control is positive takes this form and we call it pulse sequence one. And when the control can take negative values, takes this form and we call it pulse sequence two. Now, for the bank singular bank charging protocol, we find the durations TAF1, TAF2, TAF3 of the three pulses. We use the condition that on the singular arc, phi x and phi y should be zero. And specifically, we apply at the time of the second switching TAF1 plus TAF2. We actually need to evaluate this thing here. So we need to find lambda at this time. And also, we need to find the state at this time. Uh, I will not give details. I will skip the details for how to do it. I will tell you that the final result depends on the total duration capital P. And instead of the durations of the individual pulses, it's more convenient to use TAF sum, which is a sum of TAF1 plus TAF3 of the durations of the initial and final bank pulses, and TAF difference, which is the difference of the durations of the pulse. So evaluating these conditions, we can express them in this form. We are not at the parameters ui, xi, uz, X, Z, Y, I, Y, Z, all of them depends on what I said before, tough sum, tough difference, and the capital T. From these two conditions, you can actually find this one. And if we replace the expressions for these uh, parameters here, we eventually end up to this condition that sinus small omega tough difference over two should be zero. This leads to two conditions, tough difference equals zero. So the duration of the initial and final pulse are the same. And this turns out to be optimal for the case where we have negative controls and that difference equals two pi over omega. And this is optimal for the case where we are allowed, allowed to have only positive controls. Now, if we plug one of these conditions, one or this one, in one of the other conditions up there, we end up with transcendental equations for the tough sum, the other parameter. So, this is the transcendental equation for the case where only positive controls are allowed. And this is a transcendental equation for tap sum in the case where also negative controls are allowed. We also find the minimum duration which is necessary for full, full charging to achieve uh, the spin-up state. So for full charging, it is necessary to minimize the real part of A of T. The real part of A of T is expressed this way. And if we take the partial derivative, with respect to capital T, we find a condition which relates tough sum with the total duration tough. And then we take this relation and we plug it back to the transcendental equations for toughest, which still hold, and we find equations giving the minimum duration. So the first equation gives the minimum duration in the case where we have only positive control, and the other one in the case where also negative control is allowed. So we plot here the normalized minimum duration for full charging, normalized with respect to pi over j versus the normalized amplitude, maximum amplitude of the control. The blue dust line corresponds to pulse sequence one, positive control, and the other one, the red uh, solid line, in the case where negative control is also permitted. And here we have the same plot, but we change the horizontal variable. We use j over small omega. We make an expansion around here because this is linear. So we find the slope, which is different for the two cases. And also we make an expansion up there. In the first case, for the blue curve, this is also linear. But for the other case, we have this very abrupt drop here. It is actually the square root of three of the linear quantity on the horizontal axis. Next, I have some examples about optimal controls and trajectories for full charging. For the case where uh, the maximum control amplitude is 2.5 times j, and for this ratio of ice and coupling with respect to the longitudinal field. So we have, for the case of positive control, bang, singular, bang. So the first bang goes this way, the blue one, but it continues, makes a first turn, and then goes back again to B. Then the singular control corresponds to a small rotation around z axis, and then the final bang falls is the green dust line here, which brings the block vector back to the North Pole after having acquired the global phase pi that we need. And here we have the bang, singular bang situation where uh, negative controls are allowed. 
Uh, we also have the same, but for different maximum control amplitude. So we have a larger maximum control amplitude, it's four now. And we see, and then we also have it for six. And you see that uh, as long as the maximum control amplitude increases, the uh, singular part of the pulse sequence occupies a larger portion. Next, we have, we plot the stored energy vs duration for fixed J over omega Z and various values of the control amplitude, 2.5, 4, 6. So vertical axis is the stored energy, horizontal axis is the available duration. Blue dust line correspond to the case of a positive control, a red solid line to the case of neg negative control. So when the available duration is short, then a single constant pulse is optimal. So for both cases, we have the, get the same result up to this point where is the duration 2 pi over a small omega. After that, if we continue with a non-pulse, we worsen the performance. So it's better not to do anything. And this corresponds to this plateau here. And then there is a threshold of time beyond which the bank, singular bank pulse sequence becomes optimal. This threshold is larger for the case of only positive control and is smaller if never negative control is allowed. We see that as we increase the control, maximum control amplitude, a single pulse can do better and better. But in order to get the full charging, it is necessary to employ the bank, singular bank pulse sequence. And the final graph is that, again, the stored energy versus the duration. But now we fix the maximum control amplitude and we change the ratio here of J over omega Z. So we have various values. This is one half, one third, one fifth, one tenth. We see that the stored energy depends in this area, in this area for, of times depends on this uh, ratio here. But what you can do with a single pulse is independent of here. And also depends on here, the threshold beyond which the bank, singular bank, uh, optimal pulse sequence appears. So we formulated the, the first uh, charging of a spin pair quantum battery as an optimal control problem on an effective single spin system. We solved that using optimal control theory and highlighted the role of singular control in the optimal solution. And our goal next is to extend this work to spin change composed of three or more spins. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the nice talk. We have questions for the speaker. So my first question is, do you have an experimental system in mind to test something like this? And then the second is, you know, if you wanted to extend this, could you have sort of at least to even chains of even length, you could just do bang, singular bang, switch over bang, singular bang type thing? Or Paul, I, the system is very generic. The two spins with eyes and coupling. You can find many examples, I guess. Maybe, you know, uh, the, the by exciton system has the same structure. So can one interpret these results also kind of in, in an MR setting? Uh, what does this kind of charging do? So because uh, it's like the spin system you're considering. Okay, so probably I should speak louder. Uh, so... So you interpreted this as, as a as a battery. So, but I understand it's like a, a spin system. Yeah, but can yes, but but um, can one interpret this kind of particular controls in in kind of in an NMR point of view? Of course, but uh, you see, can apply it. It's, it's just you know the mathematical formula. So probably NMR is the starting point, but as I told you, this the, exactly the same system is for the by x. So it's it's quite generic. It does not depend on them. So, but uh, did I understand this kind of a two spin system or? But I see. You can map it in one spin system and then apply maximum principle. Otherwise, it will go directly. I see. Although we have done that in the past, it's not very easy for two spins. For two spins. Yeah. 